Hi, I'm Rich with Inside HPC. We're here at SC14 in New Orleans at the SGI booth, and I'm here with Angling Go from SGI, the CTO of the company. How are you, sir? Uh, it's great to see you again, Rich. Yeah, 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 it's, yeah, been it's, yeah. it's been a while. Yes. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, I well, want to start at the beginning, uh, which was you, you did a plenary this year with SGI. This was an event that has never been done before. It started actually before the conference. Tell me more about how, how did it go? Yes, it's a, uh, quite a number of firsts, right? Yeah. It's the first plenary and the first time the organizers are doing it. They did a great job. Uh, the organizers told me uh, that uh, there was 1,700 people that showed up in this arena, yeah. right? Wow. And uh, the goal was to uh, send a message in the talk, the one hour talk, uh, that HPC matters yeah, to, a wide, uh, to a wide audience. Um, Co-presenting with me was Piyush from NASA, and both of us uh, gave um, a, s a set of customer examples of why HPC matters in five categories. Uh, um, uh, human basic needs, why HPC matters to hu uh, humanity in human basic needs, uh, to uh, reducing hardships, uh, to commerce, entertainment, and then once we have all that, to answering profound questions like whether we are alone uh, in this universe, right? And that's the Kepler program, uh, and, and then going further back in time, uh, uh, looking at using the um, square kilometre array to look at the dark ages yes. and then going further back the Planck satellite to look at the cosmic microwave background and then where the LHC comes in to go be even further back uh, to try and recreate uh, the different uh, particles uh, that exist at that time, the quark gluon state of at, that, at that time. So you can see where, how all the different instruments are linked up and how they generate massive amounts of data that needs to be processed by high performance computing. So it was, uh, it, it, it's, it's, was, it was good to try and put all this together. Yeah. And, and moreover, all the effort put in, you know, there was 1,700 people watching it. So That's got to be very gratifying when you yeah. work, work so, so hard for something like that. Yeah. Great, great. Well, hey, I want to change the subject just a little bit because, you know, the next big leap for us in supercomputing, HPC does matter, but is uh, they want, we want to do exascale. Yes. And uh, um, we've seen announcements of machines that are in the 150 petaflop range coming in 2017, but where does where SGI see Exascale and what are your next steps? Mm. We see it in uh, two uh, groups of machines that ultimately, as you will hear more and more of in this conference, uh, them coming together. The compute side uh, of Exascale and the data analytics, high performance data analytics side of Exascale. Slowly, uh, but surely the two will come together. So currently we have uh, two separate systems uh, for that. So we have the ICEX machine that has a path to exascale. ICEX, ICEXA that we just announced uh, for, for release in 2015, and then ICEXA uh, for release in 2017. And that's EXA for exascale, Exa, right? Exa yeah, scale. right. ICEX, ICEXA, ICEXA. Uh, and for that, uh, we are focused on uh, power cooling, then interconnect yes. with our partners, the topology for it, all right? And a large part of the investment is also in software, the resiliency, management, and performance side of software. So that would be the quick summary of the ICEX side uh, on the compute side. But there is also, just as importantly, uh, we believe, um, a data analytics side. And this is where we are preparing the UV to be the pre and post and the in-situ uh, visualizer, in-situ analyzer, um, as well as uh, the system that will be streaming data for computational steering as the Exascale application is running. Computational steering, we believe, will become more and more important. In-situ computational steering will become more and more important because uh, for, for an Exascale application to run, uh, you want to really not wait till the completion of the application to find out whether you've got it right. You want to watch it while it's, uh, while it's going on, while it's running. So this is where we are investing our R&D in UV. Um, and the key, the key advantage of it is coherent shared memory. Not shared memory, but coherent shared memory. And uh, because of that, you truly can leave your data intact without having to uh, distribute them. So that's uh, the two areas of investment as we move forward uh, to Exascale. And we've already found uh, early users of uh, the new generation of UV machine. Uh, one, uh, one particular uh, uh, 
partner of ours, is looking at how we can uh, take, for example, uh, a year's worth of twi Twitter data. Each day, there's about half a billion tweets. Okay. So yeah. A year would be about 200 billion tweets, right? Wow. Uh, to try and dump it all in a single UV, right? And within five second turnaround time, to be able to answer questions about that. Those, uh, Do some graph processing and stuff yes, and, and one, find uh, patterns. Yeah, even to just a simple filter. Tell me all tweets in the 200 billion uh, <laughs> that talks about supercomputing. Okay. And then straight away, you'll map it onto a global uh, uh, world atlas for you where all the tweets are occurring. And you find a geographical location interesting, like uh, New Orleans. You point to it; it gives you all. It scrolls through the, the tweets that are talking about supercomputing there. So I've I've, I've tried that, and uh, it, it, the goal is to for five second turnaround time for that. Of course, we've not reached uh, um, uh, this this 200 billion yet. We are using a sample size version of it, and the goal is to put uh, up to, if possible, if the driver support, uh, for example, uh, soon. Uh, 32 K80s from NVIDIA in a UV with 32 sockets and handle all that 200 billion tweets. That would be uh, a long-range goal to try yeah. and get to. Yeah, yeah. That, That's exciting because there's no telling what you might discover that's if right. you had this capability. In, in fact, in fact, uh, someone just uh, dumped the entire Wikipedia yeah. right into memory and then wrote uh, a script that said for every year from history of Wikipedia that's in the history of Wikipedia until today, every year, all countries mentioned together, connect them by a line and plot it on a world atlas. If the mention was uh, uh, sensed to be positive, green line. If the mention was sensed to be negative, red line. And he just ran the animation. Yeah? Interesting. And then suddenly he saw flashes of red, right, in different years. And he started to ask the question, could it be that the flash comes before the actual uh, negative event? Then if it is the case, can Wikipedia be a predictive tool? Wow, that's pretty exciting. I mean, could the sum total of human knowledge right. in this package... And communication, human knowledge, right? Uh, updates people put in. Could this sum total... Gives, can, be, can it be a predictive tool, a forecasting tool of social events? Yeah. Wow, this is like a, a profound yes. way of thinking about things, right? So these are the new things you, you won't think of, <laughs> right? Well, yeah. I guess when we say HPC matters, we're not kidding, yeah, right? Yes, 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 yes. In fact, uh, go, go look up the video when it's published yes. uh, on HPC matters, the first plenary. Um, and and we, we put all these examples in there. Yeah. Uh, I'm really looking forward to seeing yeah. that. Well, well, thanks for sharing that with us today. Oh, I'm this is very it's been a great show here, and yes, I think yes. you guys are doing great work as yes, always. Uh, and good job, Harish. Uh, yeah, we we need you in the community. Uh, <laughs> oh, well, uh, yeah. Thank you. yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah, thank you. See you later. I'm not worthy. <laughs> <laughs>